If you've ever flown between the capital cities of the Baltic nations, then it will have probably been with just one airline, Air Baltic. My first flight with Air Baltic was back in 2018, before I knew all that much about this corner of the world. I had to get from London to Delhi, India, and I was looking to fly with some new airlines to have some new experiences while snagging a cheaper fare at the same time. The result was a series of Air Baltic flights from London Gatwick to Riga and then to Moscow. And then the booking included a flight to Delhi with Aeroflot. Since then, I've flown with Air Baltic quite a few times, probably close to 20 or 30 flights by now. I like them, and I do want them to succeed. But can they? One aviation expert doesn't think so, and he shared his opinion with Estonian media. I stumbled on this article a while back, and so I thought it would be an interesting topic to turn into a video. So the opinion comes from a guy named Tumas Peterson, who spoke with Estonian public broadcaster ERR. Peterson thinks that the debt that Air Baltic owes, in the form of ultra-high interest bonds, will be the airline's downfall. He says that the Latvian government faces some tough questions with what to do with its national airline. Now, looking at the airline's financials gives us a better picture of this bad situation. Air Baltic reported a loss of about 88.8 million euros for the first half of 2024. It's carrying a debt load of about 1.14 billion euros, which is an increase of almost 8% from the year before. Peterson says that the carrier's model of operations requires a lot of investment with no guarantee of future profits. And he says this to ERR. This is not the right business model in my opinion. This old-fashioned national airline business model, which does not pay off on this kind of scale. Like we had Estonian Air trying to go very wide so that if there is an effect of scale, you can make a profit. But it takes a long time and a lot of investment. Basically, it is not a profit-making project. But the Latvians have the same argument that Estonia might have, that without it, you wouldn't be able to fly out of this corner of the world. And then Peterson continues, saying, The biggest negative signal actually was that they got a loan from the market at only 14.5% interest, which is still terrible these days. Basically, it shows that it's just a pyramid scheme in financial terms, and that at some point, it just has to collapse. Now, he doesn't exactly explain why Air Baltic won't become profitable in the future. It seems like his position is based on a heavy debt combined with a very bad interest rate. But in addition to this, I know at the moment the airline is facing a lot of challenges. Engine supply chain issues, having to avoid Belarusian, Russian, and Ukrainian airspace, and high fuel prices. There's also the fact that the airline faces competition on both sides. Ryanair and Wizz Air compete on the budget side, while full-service carriers like Finnair, Lufthansa, SAS, and others are offering competitive basic fares along with well-timed flights. I think Air Baltic could do much better if it weren't for this regional conflict. But Peterson thinks that the state airline model that Air Baltic is based on just doesn't work in the long run. Another aviation expert by the name of Sven Kukamelk told ERR that despite the huge losses, Air Baltic is still a profitable project for the Latvian state, noting that because of the airline's existence, it supports tourism and jobs. So I guess I'm not fully convinced by Peterson's assertion that Air Baltic will be collapsing sometime soon. But maybe it's just that I don't understand why such a high interest rate becomes this guaranteed signal of future failure. So maybe if someone does know, they can help me understand by leaving a comment. When I look at their financial report, yeah, it did lose a lot of money for the first half of 2024. But compared to the same period of time in 2023, many of the airline's numbers are up. More passengers, higher load factors, more revenue coming from passengers, things seem to be moving in the right direction. So perhaps if the airline could refinance its debt with a lower interest rate, the situation could turn around pretty quickly. But without getting too analytical with the airline's numbers, it would just be sad to see Air Baltic collapse. And I really don't think the Latvian government would let it. I don't think the Lithuanian or Estonian governments would let it either, if they had something to say about it. I think basic air connectivity between the capitals of the Baltic nations is just too important. Already, there are talks for Lithuania and Estonia to invest in or take partial ownership of Air Baltic. And I think once this happens, it makes it even more unlikely that a full collapse would ever happen. Maybe if the airline were losing customers, then it would have to rethink how it operates and whether being a hybrid airline is the way to go. But I do believe it's just going through a streak of bad luck right now with engine issues and airspace restrictions. In my experiences, the airline offers a pretty decent product, and I've mostly had positive experiences with their service. But of course, I would love to know what you think about all this. Are there too many challenges for Air Baltic to succeed, 
Or is that one aviation expert just being too alarmist? Do let me know by leaving a comment. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoy this channel and want to support me in making more videos, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. There's a link down in the description for you to check out. Thanks so much for watching.